Good afternoon um, and welcome uh, to our webinar discussion today entitled uh, Why Engineers Should Consider a Career in Teaching. Uh, I will be hosting your panel discussion today. Uh, my name is Suleiman Farooqi. I work for the Department for Education. I've been in the department since uh, 2021 and I'm a policy uh, advisor focusing on areas of shortage subjects, physics being one of the key ones, um, and uh, uh, kind of initial teacher training policy. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. We've got a very exciting agenda um, uh, coming up. And uh, without further ado, I'd also like to introduce our panel. So uh, today we've got David Lakin, who is the Head of Education, Safeguarding and Education Policy at the Institution of um, Engineering and Technology. We've got Georgina Smith, who is a trainee physics teacher at the University of Birmingham on the Engineers Teach Physics program. Um, we've got Professor Helen Jaynes, OBE, who is the Education and Skills Strategy Board Chair from the Institution of Mechanical Engineers. We've got Neil Adams, who is a teacher training advisor from the Department for Education. Um, and we've got Dr. Rhys Morgan, who is a Director of Engineering and Education at the Royal Academy of Engineers. So we've got a really fantastic, broad and diverse um, range of views and opinions on the panel, which should hopefully stimulate a very lively and informative uh, discussion. Briefly before we kick off, I thought I'd give a quick summary as to why, why we're here. Um, and I, I think it's uh, kind of uh, implied through the title, but um, we need more physics teachers. Without, without those physics teachers, children are missing out on the opportunity to develop their understanding of the world around them. And we feel engineers bring a very unique and innovative perspective into the physics classroom, which helps explain big ideas to young people. So the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, the Institution of Engineering and Technology, the Royal Academy of Engineering and the Department for Education are coming together today to discuss our shared problem of a shortage of skilled STEM professionals entering the engineering workforce and solutions via the teaching profession. Um, this is a topic that's very close to my heart. Um, Engineers Teach Physics is a, uh, is a program that kicked off in 2021. Um, and it was an initiative um, that the DFE brought to a wide range of sector representatives, including many on the call today and others who, who aren't on the call today, um, to directly address that issue of how engineers can bring their experiences and their skills into the classroom um, to, to teach physics and inspire the next generation of engineers and physicists. In terms of the agenda today, we're gonna to be covering off engineers teaching, why we have a shortfall in engineers. We're gonna also talk about life as a teacher, um, and then we're going to talk about kind of innovative solutions to, 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 the, pro uh, to the problem that we're facing in terms of the shortfall of, of physics teachers. Um, just to remind everyone in the audience, if you have a question, please put it in the chat and we'll have a segment at the end for, for Q&A where we'll put your questions to, to, our, to our panel members. Without further, further ado, uh, I'd like to open uh, with a question that I think is probably quite topical. And uh, it's uh, directed to, our, to a couple of members of our panel, and it's who was your favorite teacher and why? And first, I'll go to Georgina Smith. Hi, so um, my favorite teacher at school, I think was probably my, um, my maths teacher at GCSE. Um, she was um, very supportive, very kind, um, she cared about, you know, us getting the tasks done and and making sure that we'd kind of learn, um, we'd learn all the content we needed to. Um, but yeah, she was also just very kind, um, even though we, she made sure that we got stuff done. Absolutely brilliant, Georgina. Thank you for that. And then uh, Reese, the same question to you. Uh, thanks, Sol. Uh, yeah. Um, so I've just been thinking about this, and my answers probably are the music teacher, a guy, a man called uh, Alan Guy. Uh, he was a real larger-than-life character, full of enthusiasm, uh, really kind of brought everyone together to do lots of concerts and all sorts of things. And, yeah, he just kind of brought the uh, whole school together around music, which is a really kind of special thing. Um, so nothing to do with science and mathematics and my going into engineering. Uh, but uh, but yeah, just a really very enigmatic, enthusiastic teacher. Thanks, Reese, and thanks, Georgina. It's it, it's really telling that both of you have talked about how you felt and how those teachers made you feel. I think that's a really impactful thing um, in in terms of the impact that teachers can have. Um, thank you, thank you very much for that. I think we'll jump into our first topic, which is engineers teaching. 
And the first question that we have, uh, Reese, um, again for you, it's, do you think there are enough people studying the appropriate subjects post-16 to become engineers? And why should engineers consider a career in teaching? Uh, yeah, thanks, Phil. Um, I think probably the simple answer is no. Uh, there aren't enough people uh, teaching the subjects that lead on to engineering. Um, I think all the engineering representatives on this call will know for as long as we can collectively remember there have been shortages, reported shortages in industry of engineers and technicians. Um, and in many respects, the, the, the situation is getting worse, not better, particularly with things like the government's uh, net zero ambitions. You know, those are underpinned by uh, electrical engineering skills and we've actually had a chronic shortage of electrical engineers and the and the um the supply has been going down over the last 20 years so so we're in a really you know serious situation in terms of being able to meet our uh, net zero ambitions um and i think you know as engineers what we do is we we do root cause analysis we try and understand what's what's causing the problem and i think we can really trace that back to a lack of specialist teachers in schools who are able to infuse and engage and encourage their students in ways to encourage them uh, uh, with their with their subjects post 16. And I think engineers bring a special kind of understanding of maths and physics and computing and design and technology, all the subjects that lead to engineering, um, because they've been looking at it from a real world perspective. So it's not just some kind of abstract theoretical thing. Engineering is rooted in the real world, the practical. And I think that helps bring the subjects to life for young people. So I think that's the really powerful thing that engineers can bring to teaching. Thank you, Reese. And, and Helen, I kind of want to bring you in on that as well and, and, get, and get your thoughts um, on that question. Yes, yeah, so Reese covered quite a, quite a bit there, hasn't he? And, and, I, and I guess for me, teaching essentially brings together that real love of learning and, and that as a teacher that you're always learning new things. As an engineer, that's what you're constantly doing and you're looking at optimizing and bringing together the breadth of experience to the down to the, the, the in, in a sense, the table, particularly within the context. Um, and, that, and really, Reese has mentioned it, but our profession and engineering influences all aspects of our lives and that role of, of education transforming lives. And you can see light bulbs going on in the, right across the classroom. So I do think engineers can place that learning in context, really bring to life the equations maybe that you're using in physics. But I think I'd like to also offer something addition to the specialism, because I think that engineers can bring a language of engineering and engineers into all curriculum and into the schools much more widely. So engineering isn't just considered in a physics lesson, for example, or in a D&T lesson, but actually maybe the art and design teacher can bring it in or history, uh, English, for example, so that engineering isn't, um, any longer that word that we don't really bring out within the STEM, but we're much more confident across the whole school about it. Um, so I think, yes, engineering isn't only about engineering physics or design, but right across the whole curriculum. Thank you. Thanks, and I think that's a really, really fascinating idea about how it can benefit the broader curriculum um, as well. That's, that's, a, that's a really great insight. So I guess kind of leading on, on from that, what kind of skills and experience do you think engineers could bring into the classroom that would enable them to be a great teacher? I guess it follows on quite nicely from what Helen was saying. Um, David, can I come to you on that? Yeah, um, thank you, Sol, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, Rhys and Helen have, have touched on some really good points there uh, already. Um, I, I think there's a lot of transferable skills that engineers have, you know, problem solving, working under pressure, time constraints, et cetera, et cetera. So these are really good transferable skills that they could bring into teaching. But I think one of the most important thing is, is their experience that they have. And, uh, and again, Reese and Helen have touched on some of the things about bringing some of the subjects to life with real world applications. Um, but a really important part of that experience that they bring is, is confidence, is confidence in the classroom to talk about engineering, to talk about technology, um, to talk about it um, currently with, with the current um, 
uh, methods and processes of, of uh, engineering that, that exist. So we know that um, currently a lot of teachers that are teaching um, don't have that confidence. So they, they, they shy away from it uh, and, and uh, don't want to be embarrassed when they get that difficult question coming at them from, from children. But of course, engineers will have that confidence to talk confidently about engineering as a subject right from the start. Thanks, David. And I think it kind of would be remiss if we didn't speak to, to, to Georgina about that question as the, the, the trainee teacher on the panel. Georgina, what's, what's your view on that? Um, yeah, I, I agree with, with uh, what David was saying. He, he kind of gave a lot of the skills that I was thinking about when I was uh, thinking about this. Uh, I would definitely pick up on um, problem solving and creativity um, and actually um, teaching students how to kind of solve different problems, um, especially when it comes to, you know, their examinations. We can look at a question in a slightly different way um, and kind of creatively prepare lessons um, definitely, you know, differently to how someone else, someone else might approach it. Um, I also think that in terms of like experiences, um, a lot of people in engineering have a lot of different connections and they know a lot of different people and having this tool um, can be so useful um, into kind of bringing in different people and talking to people still in industry about what they're actually looking at uh, or in research, what they're actually doing um, and bringing this into lessons is just is, is just really useful. Thanks, Georgina. I think that's that's really fascinating. I think obviously physics is traditionally considered quite a, a difficult subject with difficult concepts. So that bringing it to life is so valuable. Um, and Neil, I wanted to come to you um, and ask you kind of what do you think could attract engineers to teaching in your experience? Um, well, I'm uh, an engineer turned teacher myself. So uh, I, I worked in the building industry before teaching. Uh, I think the rewards of the profession are intrinsic. It's incredibly varied. It's people focused, uh, which some uh, engineering jobs are not. Uh, there's an enormous amount of flexibility in terms of the problem solving and things that you do. You get, as as has been mentioned, you get to learn a lot of new things um, because as a, a physics teacher, you will also teach general science. So when I first started teaching, one of the things I enjoyed most was getting my chemistry and my biology up to speed. Um, and there aren't many jobs outside of demolition where you're actively encouraged to blow things up. And uh, teaching chemistry is, is one of those few uh, roles that offers that perk. Um, so it's a it's a job in which um, no two days are the same. It's a job in which you can tailor the job uh, very much to match your interests. So if you're interested in uh, training other people as you uh, develop your career, you can do that. You can get involved in the teach training side of things. If you've got extracurricular interests, uh, you can pursue those. So I took my uh, rugby coaching and refereeing badges and pursued music with students and things like that. Uh, it, it's a tremendously varied career and it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Neil. Um, that's that's incredible first-hand insight. Um, Helen? Yeah, so I guess what I would say to start with, have a go, do some volunteering um, to get a real sense of what actually goes on within a school. So um, most of the professional institutions are engaged with, uh, as a STEM ambassador, for example, through STEM learning. So engage in volunteering, do some outreach work with, with schools to get a real insight. Um, and, I, and, I, and I do think there is a, an intrinsic kind of passion for and commitment to learning. Um, and, I, and I would include that whole entire ability for education to transform lives. And that's really what attracted me into education. So I am an engineer first and foremost, went into teaching within FE, further education, then university. Um, and, and one of the also things I think is, really quite critical are opportunities for partial secondment from industry perhaps into into schools particularly if you're mid-career engineering and uh, and that's essentially what i did i did some part-time evening classes first get a sense of uh, try before you buy sort of thing thank you thanks helen um i guess it kind of like leads very nicely on to um kind of talking about that career changing aspect as well as kind of for recent graduates so david how might teaching appeal to graduates or career changes specifically 
Yeah, well, I think for, for graduates, it's that opportunity to really make a difference. Uh, they can enter the, the teaching profession and inspire young people to, to really go on and, uh, and, and change the world for, for us all. We, we know that engineers uh, change the world uh, and make it a better place for us all. And, and they have the opportunity to, to inspire the young people to go on and do that. So it's, uh, it's very appealing. And I think for, for career changers, it's, it's more about giving back. Um, they, they, they've work, been working in a profession that uh, I'm sure has been very good for them for many, many years all over their, their career. Um, so to be able to go back into education and then share and pass on that, that knowledge and that experience and all those skills that we, we talked about earlier, I think is very appealing for them to, to want to be able to give back and inspire that next generation. Thanks, David. And, and, and Reese, um, kind of, what are your thoughts to build on that? <clears throat> yeah, uh, just reflecting on some of the comments that have already been made. Um, uh, as Neil said, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of variety in teaching. And I think that, you know, it's it's going to be um, uh, exciting for some people. Let's, you know, let's let's face it, not everyone is going to go on, want to go into teaching. There is a vocational element to this. Um, and many people prefer to be um, at the desk working on um you know the engineering projects but you know but there are there will be some people out there who are you know actually can be uh, switched on to this idea um i think it's also you know there's an opportunity to be inspiring as david was just mentioning you know really uh, in working and developing young minds uh, and young engineers for the future i think that's a really exciting uh, prospect as well for some people um and i think also there's that kind of um, aspect of learning continuously and potentially applying engineering principles. If you think about young people as uh, you know a kind of manufacturing process, you're taking raw materials in at the one end and you're producing finished goods at the other. And there's a whole set of engineering processes and principles you could apply. And certainly, you know, applying continuous improvement and the way you're doing things. You know that you could uh, you could make it really interesting actually as an engineer. I think teaching. Um, and then just to pick up uh, uh, on the on the career changes, I think the COVID pandemic has made a lot of people reassess uh, their lives and their work life balance and their lifestyles. Uh, a lot of people have moved out of big cities to the countryside and things like that. And I think, you know, teaching because of its ubiquity right across the country offers something uh, for people who are looking for a, a change in their uh, career. Thanks, Rita. I think that's a really, really interesting point um, and, and, and just points out all the panel members have raised in this section. And I think um, it kind of brings the first section to a close about engineers teaching. And I think it's really interesting how we can uh, draw on the experiences and real world experiences and problem solving skills and the transferability of the skills that an engineer has to take into the classroom, which perhaps hasn't um, necessarily been as obvious um, to some. But I think it's important that we also talk about um, the engineering profession and the shortfall in engineers. Um, and I know uh, colleagues on the panel have mentioned net zero and uh, the Prime Minister has a huge interest in STEM as well. Um, so to put to David, how do you think engineers becoming teachers will support the engineering profession itself in the long term? Yeah, um, I think that the main thing will be that, again, as we've already said about bringing that, that level of experience and being able to, to, to talk confidently about engineering as, as a career option, and being able to use that experience to apply real life applications and context to the current curriculum and, and the current um, subjects that are taught will hopefully help inspire more young people. It's all about trying to give young people uh, more information, more exposure um, to engineering, to understand what engineers do, what engineering is, to, to help them with an informed choice for when they come to choose their their um, their next steps and and subjects to continue studying uh, or, or career paths, so I think in the long term, having engineers um, in the teaching profession will will be able to share that information, that knowledge, talk more confidently about engineering and route into engineering, and hopefully support and inspire young people to make those decisions for for going on into the into the profession further down the line. Thanks, David. And, and, and Neil, what, what, what are your reflections on, on, on that specifically as well? Um, 
I think certainly from my uh, experience uh, early in my teaching career, uh, very few of the students really knew what engineering was. Uh, and so the more awareness there is in classrooms of what engineers uh, do and the kind of uh, the kind of thought process that go into it, the more likely we are for, for students to consider it as a, as a career later on. The research um, done, uh, there was a lot of very high quality research done uh, in the US on um, STEM careers and underrepresented groups. And what it showed was that students make their decisions uh, about their potential futures much, much earlier than one might think. Uh, many career stays in secondary schools uh, come too late. Um, uh, students have decided the kind of people they are, um, usually by their early teens. And so n knowing engineers is really important um, for those students in those kind of questions of, of what kind of person am I, what kind of career might I do? So, yeah, I think that um, uh, there's more involvement in schools from engineers, whether it is through teachers or through things like the STEM Ambassadors Programme um, or many of the other really good interventions that take place through things like the Small Peace Trust um, and the robotics challenges and things like that. Uh, the more connection uh, students are able to build with engineers, particularly if they happen to be from a family or socioeconomic background where they don't come into contact with engineering professionals uh, at all, uh, then the more likely we are to, to be drawing from a broad order base of potential students when it comes to careers in engineering. Thank you, Neil. Um, I think both um, you and David have touched on that really, really vital point of demystifying engineering for young people who are making those career decisions quite early. So I think that's a huge benefit that, that you know, engineers in the classroom could bring. Uh, thank you for that. Um, which kind of leads us to this which the next question, which is how, how do you think more engineers teaching in schools could inspire greater take up of STEM subjects post 16, which is obviously, um, you know, a key priority and perhaps something that, uh, you know, we'd like to see greater take up of. Reese, I'd like to bring you in on that. Yeah, thanks, Alon. Um, so going back to what David was saying, I, you know, this is an investment for the future. This is the engineering profession investing in more skills for the future. And we only need a small proportion. We're not saying we need, uh, thousands and thousands of our engineering graduates to go off uh, into into teaching. Just one percent, which is around about two hundred odd uh, uh, engineering graduates, um, one percent of our uh, engineering graduates going into teaching would have a disproportionate effect on the number of uh, uh, teachers in physics. Something like thirty percent uh, increase in the in the, the the amount of people going in to teach physics uh, on an annual basis. So you know we could have a really significant uh, impact here by by um, increasing the number of engineers going into teaching. Um, and I think you know we've we've touched on the inspiration, the uh, engagement aspect of this. But actually, you know those engineering graduates, those people who've gone through an engineering degree, they'll be able to give much more kind of granular advice as well to those young people. So not just about study STEM subjects. Um, for example, you know, we get a lot of uh, young people who think, uh, and, and actually teachers do this quite often, uh, you know, they will advise, oh, if you're really interested in STEM subjects, you should go into medicine. Well, you know, the, it's an incredibly competitive environment to get into medicine. It's really, really difficult. But actually, engineering, the, the support that engineering gives around biomedical engineering, engineering devices in medicine, uh, and then all those kind of ancillary kind of aspects of uh, medicine that are so underpinned by engineering, whether it's MRI scanners, ultrasound, heart pacemakers, the materials, all sorts of things. You know, engineers have a key role in medicine. And that's something that, you know, engineering teachers, engineers who are teachers, could start to talk to their students about, to give them some a bit, bit more kind of color around STEM subjects, not just this kind of generic, oh, science, Therefore, you go into kind of science or medicine. Thanks, Rita. I think that's that's really telling, and I think that's the kind of messaging that that you know, from our experiences, really speaks to particularly millennials and and, and Gen Z candidates. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, Helen, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Um, I mean, I've seen it firsthand. I'm a vice chair at a multi academy trust down in Kent, and having an engineer on the staff actually means that teamwork, project-based, um, schools, perhaps more confident working with employers, so that whole employer engagement piece, access to work experience, 
um, thinking about investment cases, actually, for new equipment and for new labs. Because quite often schools closed a number of, of labs, which was really essentially then cutting off pathways for young people, um, particularly the design and technology aspect, which engineer, engineers can have a great influence, but not, you know, but across the other subjects as well. So I think having an engineer can bring a whole raft of different skills into the school, not only the classroom, but the school itself. So it's actually changing the kind of conversations that are, that are actually taking place. And, and I think crucially, engineers don't, we don't tend to focus on a specific issue. So if we think about COVID and, and how we got the, um, the, the vaccine <laughs> um, out across the, across the world, the science was crucial, but it was engineers that actually got it out of the, out of the lab manufactured and distributed right throughout the world and young people want to be in want to know how they can impact on the world not just about how do i influence and learn about this science but what relevance does it have to the wider to the wider world and uh and our lives and i think particularly young people of today are far more socially conscious aren't they, conscious aren't they than than they used to be. So I, I do think that kind of, and, and our, our kind of vision, you know, changing the world through engineering, I think is absolutely critical for us all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Helen. I think, I think those, are, those are incredibly inspiring messages and, and, and STEM subjects and engineering are one of the few professions that can really actually bring that to life in a, in a really tangible way. So I think that's I mean, hopefully extremely inspiring for young people and, 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 and kind of following on, hopefully engineers being able to communicate that um, directly, whether it's through their undergraduate experiences or their professional experiences, I think it would be inc incredibly valuable um, uh, in the classroom. I think I think it's really important as well, um, kind of given the subject matter today, that we talk about teaching uh, and what life is like as a teacher. Um, we've obviously got Georgina and Neil on the line. Um, so uh, I guess, uh, Georgina, I'd like to come to you first. What does a typical day or week look like for a teacher, um, kind of based on your, your training experiences so far? Um, well, obviously, yeah, it's just important to say that I'm currently, you know, training to do this. And so my current week looks slightly different to uh, a teacher's week, um, but it's kind of part of it. Um, so I have set hours in a week that I teach. Um, I'm currently um, teaching a year 10 physics, uh, triple science physics lesson. And then I teach some key stage three um, general science. So I also teach them biology and chemistry. Um, and then in the time around this, I'm planning and preparing for these lessons, um, making sure that all the equipment's ready, practicing these practicals um, that we can be done. Um, and then, I guess it's then, you know, uh, the kind of admin side of marking books and um, making sure assessments are done, uh, being part of kind of the department and um, undertaking department meetings, being part of those. Um, yeah, and then kind of anything extracurricular, there's like different opportunities, um, as well as kind of having an engineering background um different people bring different aspects and so um before christmas i um was part of the school choir and so kind of supported that um which i think is something else that you know people we are talking about engineers specifically here but it, i think it is interesting to see different types of people coming into into education yeah amazing thanks Georgia. Were, were there any uh, performances over the christmas period with the choir uh yes they did a, um they did a christmas concert um nice. and so so we did um a couple of songs uh just in the last week of of, uh, of the term um so that was really a rewarding thing to see to see that kind of come together right at the end of term that's amazing um that's amazing um and like so that that's really interesting from a trainee teacher's perspective and, and, and neil um kind of based on your experiences kind of um post post qualification do they differ are they similar what are your reflections on a typical day or week uh, <laughs> the typical way I, I think it's when you start the profession uh it's pretty frantic 
uh, to be honest. You're getting used to schools, new environments, uh, an enormous number of acronyms. Um, lesson preparation takes up a lot of time. Um, as you get a little bit further into profession, you gain some experience. Uh, that calms down a lot. You stop second guessing yourself. Once you've been through the uh, you've been through the curriculum a couple of times, and you've got used to the rhythms of the classroom, uh, it settles down. So uh, you get a bit more. Um, you get a bit more of a routine in place. Uh, you know, I, I typically was fairly early into school in the morning to get ahead of the day. Uh, would you spend most of your time in class with students, which is to me was the best part of the job. Um, I quite often used to then finish and go and do things like uh, sports with students. Uh, and I would find myself doing preparation and administration on a couple of evenings, yes, quite late into the evening, uh, but that in my case was so that I could keep my weekends and my school holidays free. And uh, we shouldn't forget teachers enjoy 12 weeks off a year. And once you are a year or two into the profession, it is quite possible to keep all of those 12 weeks so that you can uh, do things outside of your job. Thanks, it's great that both you and Georgina were able to pursue kind of interests and hobbies, sports and, 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 and uh, singing and music outside of kind of the, the day job as well. And Neil, kind of sticking with you, um, looking back, what would you say are, are the greatest rewards and challenges um, that you experienced as a teacher? Um, I mean, the rewards for me were absolutely uh, the, the company of the young people I worked with. Uh, they were amazing. Uh, they were funny. They were frank. Uh, so, you know, occasionally challenging in terms of, of the things they were bringing into school with them. Uh, but to see young people who started off uh, quite often really not liking science, uh, either because of confidence or previous experiences, going on, uh, you know, I've seen my ex-students go on to become engineers, uh, physicists, doctors, mathematicians, that type of thing is amazing. Um, uh, to uh, work on them with some of the projects that went a little bit outside the curriculum. Um, we, we did uh, extracurricular projects around things like aerospace, alternative energy and things like that. And what students really sort of start to light up when they see the way that they could be part of the solution to those kind of issues. That was tremendous. Um, so it's, it is an incredibly rewarding career in that you feel like you're doing something good every day. Uh, it's always interesting uh, and it's frequently incredibly entertaining. Um, the challenges, I'd say workload is certainly a challenge. You have to find ways to you know, work smart, not hard to uh, you know, find you a pattern of working that, that uh, works for you. There are issues in school. Sometimes you will find students who are bringing, uh, bringing issues into a school that it's, it's, it's very often not their fault, but some of these kids lead incredibly challenging lives and their behavior is uh, uh, can be challenging um, you seek to understand why uh, they're doing these things uh, not focus on the behavior itself uh, and very often you find yourself more than anything feeling sorry for them um, I mean yeah they can be challenges but they again overcoming the challenges is a big part of the reward um, and I was a, I was quite happy as a mainstream classroom teacher I, I did that for 16 years uh, before I moved on to other things Thank you. That's, that's that's really um kind of telling insight. Um, Georgina, is there anything you wanted to add, kind of based on your in classroom experiences so far, to what Neela said? Um, I think I would definitely um, echo what Neil was saying about um, the challenge side of it being behaviour. Um, it's quite it is quite challenging to deal with, but I think like Neil was saying, it you understand that it's not that child's fault because a lot of what is going on around them is quite challenging for them um, and so there are different strategies that you know we learn about through uh, I've learned about through going to university um, and so there's strategies to, to deal with that and manage that and um, safeguarding in place to to look after these children um, and then in terms of rewards I mean I've already mentioned um, attending the Christmas concert uh, which was just wonderful it's just a joy um, to see, to see pupils um, get excited. Um, and another one I would say in, in terms of being in a science classroom, uh, when pupils are, you know, um, more willing, they become more willing to answer questions and you can see that they're interested. Um, it's just so great and wonderful to see them get excited about your subject. Um, 
and something that I'm interested in. Um, and we've I've just recently moved on to a, an astronomy topic, and it's it's obviously such a, an amazing part of physics and such so interesting parts and and seeing being able to ask all nearly all the people's questions and then kind of their brains are working and they're thinking about what they're going to say and they're excited and interested in kind of what's going on in physics um, which is just such a rewarding feeling that's amazing uh georgina kind of being able to stimulate that that passion and interest um with the students thank you for that um and georgina sticking with you actually um because obviously you're 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 kind of midway through your training period so you've kind of gone through this process quite recently um in terms of application and entering the profession uh, what would you say to anybody who's unsure about entering the teaching profession? I think um, if if it's something you're interested in and something you feel you may you know you may be able to do, I think definitely just go for it. Um, because as soon as I got going, I knew that this was something that I wanted to do, and kind of. Um, I'm, I've come to the end of my first placement now, so I'll be moving to a different school, but um, I'm just excited to see what happens there. Um, and, you know, I've got time to kind of decide where where I, you know, which kind of school I go on to after. But, um, yeah, I just think it is obviously, you know, different people are on, are, are on the, the webinar and we have career change. I came straight out of university Um and yeah i just think if you feel like it's something that you want to do definitely go for it um because i think the rewards definitely outweigh the challenges um similar to like uh, how neil was saying thanks and neil um from your experience both as a teacher and as a teacher training advisor um kind of what, what, what are your thoughts um absolutely i think um if if it's something that you are interested in doing uh first and foremost to anybody who is considering teaching and doesn't know what to do next the first thing i would say is sign up for the teacher training advisor service i know that sounds like i'm just advertising my job here but it is what i do uh there's a whole team of us we're all experienced teachers um and we will help you through any of the questions that you've got about uh, starting the training getting experience firsthand we can help people to find schools to go into and and get some experience in the classroom uh, we can talk you through any of the funding arrangements. Uh, we can talk you through the qualifications you'll need and things like that. Uh, so teacher training advisors uh, like me, there's, there's a, a team of 40 or so of us. We work one on one uh, with clients. We're available on the phone. We will talk to you via text and email. Uh, answer any questions you get. You can ask us anything you like. Uh, we will answer frankly. Um, and if you've got any questions, we should be able to answer them. So. First and foremost, uh, go there. I can pop a link into the um, chat so that you can see uh, where you sign up for that service. Um, and yeah, as general advice, I'd say try to spend some time in a school if you're considering it and see whether it's an environment that appeals to you. Pretty much everybody knows somebody who knows a teacher. Uh, and if you ask nicely, usually uh, they can arrange for you to pop in and do a visit. I spent quite a lot of my time at, uh, at school arranging for friends and friends of friends to come and sit at the back of my class and get a taste of what the classroom was like. Um, I can see in the questions, and I think we will come to some of these, that there are some concerns about finances. At the moment, there are actually very attractive bursaries to support your retraining as a physics teacher, if you wish to. Um, and there are other schemes uh, for undergraduate engineers can go and do uh, an internship and spend a little bit of time working alongside teachers in the school to get experience of it. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. If you're in any doubt, talk to us and we'll help you. Thank you, Neil. Um, and, and, and if I may also just add to that, so um, we've been speaking to kind of um, engineers, teach physics trainees, and, and one of the things that they've fed back to us that really appealed to them were things like the, the school holidays and how it enables them to strike a really good work-life balance, um, kind of spending time with their family while also kind of engaging in a really fulfilling um, career. Um, thank you, Neil and um, Georgina, for your insights uh, on that front. And I'm sure we may come back to you in the Q&A, and I can see there are a lot of questions so I want to make sure that we have a chance to answer them. I think one of the questions that's sort of come up in the chat, so I think, Reese, I think it'd be probably worth um, addressing this, is do you think flexible or part-time teaching would be attractive for engineers? And would it enable them to still continue with their profession whilst also teaching? 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, simple answer. I think it's a really, um, a really great idea. And it's something that's been tried in uh, further education, less so that I'm aware of in schools, but uh, uh, a program called Teach2 uh, was uh, developed to designed to encourage uh, engineers. I'm sorry, I've got a cat on me. I was digging his claws into my legs. Um, uh, to encourage uh, engineers to, to spend some time uh, in the classroom supporting uh, technical vocational students taking BTECs and other uh, subjects like that. Um, uh, but I do think it's a really good idea and I think um, wh where possible uh, government department for education should be looking at uh, these kind of more flexible arrangements to enable people to do a little bit of part-time teaching um, uh, where possible and then uh, go and carry on with their work because you know it a number of the comments have talked about the, the kind of financial constraints of going into teachings particularly if they're um you know in a in a reasonably senior position in industry you know they're they're looking at a kind of a pay reduction so uh, so you know trying to find ways of balancing that giving them the opportunity to teach while maintaining a kind of higher salary is definitely a good thing to do Thanks, Rhys. Um, Helen, do you have any uh, reflections on, on that point? Oh, I'm a real fan. I'm a real fan of engineers actually being able to go into a classroom part, on a part-time basis. Um, and and I, I would have thought, we haven't talked about Ofsted at all, actually, up to now. But actually, the new Ofsted framework is very much about context learning and being able to evidence it. And so having engineers that can go, can be part of that classroom environment, but actually also maintaining their engineering profession, I, I think is absolutely crucial. But it is going to require, I think, quite a bit of work, both with, from a government perspective, from a school perspective. And actually, I also think the engineering profession itself has quite a bit of work to do. Um, and, I, you know, I know IET, IMEC is very... Um, interested in it, and I'm sure Royal Academy of Engineering through through uh, Rees to, to enable mechanisms for it to happen. Because I think there are areas of the of the country. So, for example, in Kent and Medway, it is a fundamental part of our strategy of, um, I guess, repositioning the whole of the science, engineering, and technology infrastructure in schools, but also working with employers. But we need the mechanisms that support schools in, in doing it. That might mean um, thinking about it from an offset perspective and, um, you know, kind of what gets measured gets done sort of sort of thing. So, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan, but it is going to require concerted effort at policy level and strategy level in order to deliver it. Thank you, Helen. Um, and thank you, Reese, uh, for that. Um, I can see there are a lot of questions in the chat, so I want to make sure that we get through as many of those as we possibly can in the time that we have remaining. Um, so uh, the first question uh, I want to come to is from uh, Chris. And he's asked, uh, although there's been a discussion about post-16 education, I think we shouldn't ignore the earlier years. Uh, Chris volunteers with the local um, clubs group, uh, Cubs group, sorry, and the enthusiasm that the Cubs have with STEM activities towards towards badges is um, is really high. Um, would anyone like to kind of uh, from the panel come in on on that point around the earlier years and really, um, I guess, extolling the virtues from a younger age? Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, you. David, and then Helen. Yeah. So sorry, Helen. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a, that's a really, really good point. I think uh, working with children from a much younger age um, in, in primary school and um, exposing them to engineering and the word engineering and the word engineer uh, is really, really important. Uh, and, and we shouldn't just think of this as being for uh, secondary school or, or post 16. I think the earlier we can work with young people to change um their perceptions and and also with parents let's not forget that if parents have the wrong perception of what engineers do and what engineering is then then that gets rubbed off onto onto their children so working at a, a younger age to, to uh, reinforce engineering in in a positive way um is, is a really really key part of us creating engineers for the future thanks david um, helen yeah, I'm absolutely fan of what 
David has just said there, and, I, and perhaps the other angle I would just offer as well is many multi-academy trusts have trust leads where they take responsibility for perhaps a subject area. Um, so an engineer might not necessarily need to go into a primary school and only work in a primary school. If you're working at a trust level, you can influence across primary as well as secondary and really, um, I'll use the word infiltrate, that's probably a negative word, but I quite like it because it really does describe for me how I would love engineers to be able to get into a school and infiltrate all the sort of curriculum and ways of working and and the ways of thinking. I would add, perhaps I would add that there is a lot of work already going on in the primary space done by engineers. They may not be qualified teachers, but the engineering professions, and I mentioned earlier on about STEM learning, there are thousands every year engineers going into schools and doing activities. So I think primary schools actually are getting exposed. We do need to make sure that it's an inclusion. So we do need to make sure that rural schools, for example, are getting exposure, exposure to it. But yeah, ab absolute fan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Helen. Uh, I can see that kind of like a, quite a few questions as well on kind of starting a career and some of the concerns around that. So I just want to touch on those. So uh, one is from Olga uh, Petrova, who is a designer of high voltage equipment and has said that she could potentially be a teacher of AutoCAD, um, electrotechnical subjects and electric materials. Uh, I have a really strong ambition and intention to become a teacher at university. What first steps um, should she take? And then again, uh, there was another question from um, Wei Quan. Uh, would there be any suggestion on how to become a full time on how to have full time training to become a teacher? Um, Neil, can I can I bring you in on those kind of two questions? Please do. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, I've put a link in one of the chat answers to a C4 ready uh, for the teacher training advisory service. Um, and I would say to both Olga and uh, to Wei Quan that um, Excuse me, my colleagues and I will absolutely help you with those first steps. Um, so uh, for anybody interested in teaching, try and get a little bit of experience in the classroom if you can. Uh, but in order to become a teacher, you need to acquire a qualified teacher status. And you do that through a year's teacher training course. Uh, during that time, you will get some training on the science curriculum. Uh, so those parts of uh, the, the physics curriculum and the general science curriculum that aren't covered by your engineering training, you'll be brought up to speed on. Uh, there is, in fact, now a specific teacher training uh, set of teacher training courses uh, for engineers teaching physics. Uh, that that uh, do a little bit more of that side of things as well. Um, so uh, if you have a, an ambition to be a teacher, uh, I'd say the, the first step is to uh, get in touch with us um, and we will guide you through the application process and everything you need to know to get started. And, and Neil, again, thank you for that. Sticking with you, I just saw a question coming from Peter. So Peter's talked about um, kind of um, some uh, circumstances in his in his kind of personal life, which is um, uh, meaning that he is looking to make a decision for his future career, which could be part time consult consultancy, full time retirement, volunteering. He's I think he's considering a range of options. Um, so his question is kind of what role might there be for someone like Peter in future years? Um, how much training is required? Is there an upper age limit, et cetera? Are there kind of any uh, limits here? So um, I help people to find uh, their the way out to teach training courses. The, uh, the oldest person that I've uh, worked with who's been placed successfully on a teach training course was 72 um, and uh, just started her first year as a qualified teacher. I think that says it all. Excellent teachers for every child. That's very much our motto. And, and anyone can be an excellent teacher if they have the aptitude and, 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 and will. Um, so, yes, we welcome um, anyone who has a passion uh, to teach. Um, I'd like to bring Reese um, into uh, the next question from uh, John. Becoming a teacher appeals to me, but as a mid-career engineer, what does the profession do to enable a career change when my pay would suffer a huge reduction and teachers' morale is so low as, um, as they're prepared to strike? I see the only opportunity to become a teacher is once I've paid my mortgage and my children have grown up. Then if I still have the energy, I could embark on it. Reese, do you have any um, thoughts on that from um, uh, the, the professional, um, kind of engineering professional aspect? 
Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Sol. That's a really lovely question to ask me. Um, uh, so I think, um, you know, the, the very fact that we are at the engineering, um, professional engineering institutions, the Institute of Physics, uh, Engineering UK and the Academy are working with the Department for Education on this programme to encourage more uh, people in teaching is part of uh, the mechanism to enable more engineers to, to make this career jump where they feel they want to. Um, the issue around teachers' pay is something we are, you know, we're all very aware of it in the news at the moment. That's something that doesn't just, uh, you know, it's not solely about physics teachers. Um, that's right across the board, and that's something that the government needs to work out with the teaching community. So uh, I'm going to park that bit, uh, if you like. But um, but I certainly think, uh, speaking to uh, uh, colleagues within the engineering institutions, uh, particularly in the education uh, teams, uh, they'll give you some advice and guidance as well. And uh, and and actually, probably the best bet is to speak to uh, Neil and his colleagues. Uh, in the uh, Teacher Training Association uh, to, to give you that kind of detailed information that you need. Um, but, you know, uh, recognising that if you are on a very high salary, um, you know, and moving into a, a complete career change, that, you know, there may be uh, impacts on your pay. So you just, uh, you have to work that out for yourself and see if it's uh, feasible for you. Thanks, Rhys. And, and and if I may also kind of uh, come in on this question as well. So kind of echoing, echoing what Rhys said um, as well. So obviously with, uh, from the Department of Education uh, perspective, um, there's a huge amount of uh, kind of work ongoing to ensure that you know, we can support teachers as best as possible. Um, and I appreciate kind of, you know, what you're what you're reading and seeing in the in the media um, kind of ha has an impact. Uh, what I would say is obviously as a, from the department point of view, we're you know, st strongly working with with unions on that on that front and looking to reach a resolution. Um, uh, Neil, was there anything you wanted to add to what Reese has said? Um, I guess I, maybe touching on the career changer angle and kind of maybe um, some experience you have of, of working with candidates in the past who've had similar sort of concerns, if, if that's something that's... Uh, I, do, I do work with a, a lot of career changes. Uh, in fact, there are... There are a number of people from the engineering profession going into teaching uh, as career changes. Um, concerns over a, a drop in salary are certainly valid. Um, I would say that uh, the thing that perhaps people don't realise about teaching uh, salaries is they do go up fairly quickly in the first few years. So salary progression is dependent upon you meeting uh, identified performance targets. And these are not unrealistic um, aspirational things like sales targets sometimes are. It is part and parcel of the normal career progression we would expect from any teacher. Uh, so teachers' salaries, which are due to go up uh, as a starting salary very shortly to somewhere in the £30,000 uh, mark, but they go up uh, in, in fairly rapid progression over the first five years uh, to sort of um, mid to high 40s. Uh, there are extensive opportunities to take on additional responsibilities to give you a salary uplift, uh, generous uh, comparatively generous pension contributions. Uh, and it should also, I think it's worth bearing in mind that it, as I've mentioned, it is possible to take pretty much all of the holiday that you are um, you are apportioned as a teacher. Um, and so you should consider it as being uh, a salary which is paid to you um, over, say, 11 months or 11, uh, 10 and a half months or so rather than the, the full year. And think about what you'd be willing to pay uh, you know, uh, for additional leave if it was offered to you. Uh, can I just uh, come in there very briefly as well uh, on the back of uh, Neil's point and, and, and just say, actually, engineers, particularly practicing engineers who've been in industry, will have a, a lot of uh, capabilities that will lend themselves to leadership positions in, in schools, whether it's working on complex projects, understanding uh, finances, you know, working on uh, uh, resource allocation, those kind of things. You know, those are all really important uh, aspects of uh, leadership roles in uh, in schools. So actually, you know, engineers will have the skill sets to be able to make those uh, progression uh, uh, steps up into kind of leadership roles relatively quickly. Thanks, Rhys. I think that's a really important point. Um, I want to come to uh, one of Colin's questions, uh, which is, has the growth of edtech and the way it has influenced pedagogy made it easier or harder to attract engineers into the teaching profession? 
Has it changed the, the demand uh, or attractiveness of STEM subjects to students? Um, Helen, can I uh, come to you on that? You can. I'm afraid I don't have the data that I can respond directly to Colin. What I, what I and nice to, nice to see you on the call, Colin. What what I can offer, and I guess this is a, a, a southeast perspective, is that um, there is a real passion across schools and across industry to engage in that ed tech. Um, I guess coming together, and one of the things it does enable and this is something that we've been doing in Canterbury in, in Kent, is that we have machines, whether CNC machines, um, multi-access machining, whatever, um, and actually we've got young people in schools accessing the equipment from uh, virtually through their classroom. And, and, I, and so I do think, Colin, it's, it's providing massive opportunities for schools to access and engage with equipment that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do and these aren't just teaching pieces of kit these are full-scale commercial kit that we have purchased to enable real learning to take place in schools it, so in in a way maybe it, it is encouraging of engineers because engineers will be familiar with using that technology um, and one would hope, and the whole kind of um, virtual learning aspect, isn't it, you know, and kind of going into the new worlds, et cetera, um, it, that is hot happening across, uh, certainly I know at further education level and also university level. Uh, thank you, Helen. Uh, David, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I mean, first of all, I completely agree with everything Helen's just said there. Um, but if you think about it as well, um, Technology is developing at such a rapid rate and uh, we are struggling to keep up with that. We know that there's a skill shortage of people leaving education, going into the profession to fulfil the roles and the jobs that, that are needed, not, not just for today, but, but for the future. So with the advancement of, of ed tech being used in the classroom, it's allowing and, and um, uh, showcasing this kind of technology to young people. Um, you know, it's very attractive to a young person to get involved and, and use latest technology. Um, you know, uh, coding and programming is, is a big, big piece of, uh, of um, work that is and is a skill that is needed for the future. <clears throat> so by being able to use it in the classroom as part of <clears throat> the, the subject is really attracting young people to those STEM subjects. And, and, and I echo again what Helen said about that use of technology uh, would also be attracted to engineers going into the profession to, to use that in the classroom as well. Thank you, David. I think we have time um, uh, looking at the clock for two very, very quick answers. So I want to um, combine Lydia um, Lydia's question and uh, Chris's question, uh, talking about kind of um, finances um, and engineering graduates being drawn into the city and what incentive there is to go into teaching. Uh, Georgina, can I bring you in on that? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I uh, would just like to touch on, kind of following on from what's been said just now, about um, I've had the opportunity to teach some engineering lessons um, as part of my course. Uh, so the engineering teach physics, uh, engineers teach physics course even. Um, so I've been teaching science, but also had the opportunity to teach engineering. Um, so to kind of um, still had that opportunity. Um, so I'm not kind of... Um, completely away from that kind of engineering experience that I've had um, and then I guess another incentive uh, in terms of um, I think it was Lydia's question um, that there, there is the bursary I think Neil was talking about it before um, and as a an engineering graduate that was kind of very attractive um, and a really great incentive um, yeah for that so yeah Thank you very much, Georgina. Um, uh, um, I think, uh, looking at the time, uh, we're coming to the end of our session. Um, I apologise if uh, you've put a question in the chat and it hasn't been answered um, in this in this meeting. Um, just before we uh, close, Neil, I, want, I was wondering if you could give a very quick overview of the Get Into Teaching service uh, before we close the meeting. 
Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, the Get Into Teaching Service, uh, we have uh, a website, a group of advisors, early engagement schemes and, and other things. So we we will help people at any uh, position in their education we, uh, from uh, undergraduates through to career changers uh, who are interested in teaching. Um, we have uh, there's if you take a look at the get into teaching website many of the initial questions you might have will be answered there uh, and then we have the teams of advisors uh, working individually with uh, with anybody that, that requires advice thank you neil and i think if i'm not mistaken that link is in the chat uh, for the for the audience um so i've put that out there and i've i certainly put it into uh the answer to one of my questions which i believe are public perfect Thank you. Um, uh, we'll follow up if it hasn't been circulated. Uh, make sure that, that that people do have access to it. Uh, which brings us to the end of of, of our panel discussion. Um, so uh, before we close, I just want to say a, a really big thank you to uh, the IMEKI for hosting this webinar today. I'd like to thank all of our panel members for taking uh, the time to be with us today to talk um, about the engineering profession, the teaching profession, and the synergies between the two. And last but not least, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for attending and for your uh, fantastic questions and for your engagement. Um, we hope this has shed a little bit more light um, on the teaching profession and the link to engineering. Um, and we hope um, we can leave you inspired to consider a, a career in teaching and how it may benefit you um, and the young people um, in future generations. Thank you very much for your attendance. Um, we will close uh, the, the webinar now.